Right to Beret podcast, episode number 112. Interview with Mark Coker. You are listening to the Right to Be Read podcast, and this is your host, Ani Alexander. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Right to Be Read podcast, the podcast that inspires and encourages writers. I'm your host, Dani Alexander, and today I want to talk to you about something that I came across at this stage of my writing career, and I think that many of you would like to find out as well. So the thing is that among writers, we discuss a lot about whether or not we should concentrate exclusively on Amazon and of course there are two parts of the story Uh, many prefer to stick to Amazon because it's the biggest uh, book market anyway although uh, many others argue that by uh, making your book available to all the other platforms you kind of enlarge your potential audience and you reach people whom you could not otherwise reach solely sticking to Amazon. And uh, I've been thinking about this a lot as well. My books have been solely on Amazon for a while. Now I have a feeling that maybe that's not really the right thing to do. And I started thinking, okay, if I want my books to be available on all the other platforms, what's the easiest and best way to do this uh, with, uh, you know, less effort and less time spent on this because we all have have many other things to do and we might not be able to manage all these platforms separately all the time. So basically I thought that it's best to talk to a person who knows about this best. That is why today I have a special guest. Uh, His name is Mark Coker and uh, besides the fact that he's a writer himself, today I have him over because he's the founder of Smashwords and Smashwords is a free ebook publishing and distribution platform which works with over 100,000 authors and publishers. It kind of helps out with the issue I presented in the very beginning. So let's dive in and see uh, what Mark can tell about how you can have your book available almost everywhere out there. Hello there, Mark. Thank you very much for coming over to my show. Well, it's great to be here, Annie. Well, uh, I, I just wanted to, to start from the very beginning. I wanted to find out how did you get involved in publishing and are, are you a writer yourself as well or not? I mean, how did you get into all this? Sure. Well, it was all an accident. Um, my wife and I wrote a novel about 10 years ago. And um, even though we were represented by one of the top literary agencies in New York City, they were unable to sell the book to uh, any of the publishers. The book um, targeted uh, viewers of soap operas, television soap operas. My wife is a former reporter for a soap opera magazine. Uh And um, the publishers felt that a novel targeting soap opera fans wouldn't sell well because previous novels uh, in the same category had not sold well. So they were um, unwilling to take a chance on us. And, you know, our experience, our failure to find uh, a pu- get a publishing deal really opened my eyes um, to what I saw as a really big problem. You know, I imagined hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of other writers around the world who would never get a, a book deal simply because publishers were unwilling to take a chance on them. Um, and... So, you know, my background is here, you know, in Silicon Valley doing startups. And I thought, okay, this is a, a problem that could be solved by technology. I thought, what if, what if I could create a publishing platform that would allow any writer anywhere in the world to self publish an ebook and to self publish it at no cost so that it would be free, completely free for the writer? Um, and what if I could turn the compensation model upside down? You know, traditional publishers take about 85% of the net of Mm -hmm. all earnings from the book. I thought, well, what if I could give 85% of the net to the authors and we would take a small commission? And um, 
that was the idea behind Smashwords. So we launched Smashwords in 2008. Smashwords is a free ebook publishing and distribution platform. Um, and the business has been very successful. Today we're working with over 100,000 authors and publishers around the world, publishing over 350,000 books. Uh, many of our writers have gone on to become you know, international bestsellers. Um, so it's been, it's been really great. You know, the, the basic idea was that, you know, in my mind, every writer in the world has a right to publish a book. It's a matter of free speech. And I believe readers have the wisdom to decide what books are worth reading. So what we've done is we've eliminated the publishing gatekeepers as the, the arbiters of culture and uh, make it possible for any writer to publish and give readers the freedom to read what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing. It's just, you know, I, I think it uh, all went well and was successful because you had the writer's views and you, you kind of, you know, you've been in their shoes and you know what they needed exactly and um, ended up with um, something that is of great value to, to the writers. So can we, I, I'm just wondering, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to many authors these days uh, because of the podcast and because I'm an author myself too. And many, many kind of... Um, prefer to concentrate on Amazon Kindle publishing specifically. I don't know why most of them think that it's, it's you know, the biggest market anyway, so it's better to concentrate on one uh, and um, just ignore the others. So I just wanted to get your views about this, um, you know, which is the best approach? What do you think is better? Sure. Well, yes, I know a lot of writers focus only on Amazon. I think that's a grave mistake. Um, although Amazon is the largest retailer of books, online retailer of books, and certainly they control probably about 60% of the ebook market, they're only participating in about 15 different countries. Um, whereas the other major retailers are, are around the world. Uh, Apple iBooks, for example, which is the world's second largest global seller of books, they're in 51 different countries. That's 51 country specific ebook stores that you can be in. Uh, Kobo is in about 160 different countries. Uh, the Smashwords store sells worldwide. Um, so I, you know, I think authors who focus their attention only on Amazon are really squandering the greater opportunity. And the greater opportunity is to be in every store around the world. You know, when you look back at, um, you know, you look back 10 years ago when the world of book publishing was print-centric, it was all about print books, mm -hmm. um, you know, the success or failure of an author was determined by the breadth of their distribution. Yeah. If you, could, if you couldn't get your books into bookstores, um, you were forced out of print or you wouldn't reach readers. And so it, it really kind of boggles my mind when writers think that they should only focus on one store when there are all these other stores that want to sell your book, when there are all these other stores that have access to millions of readers that you simply can't reach unless you're in their stores. And, um, you know, one of the great things about the ebook revolution is that every major store around the world wants to carry self published ebooks. So their doors are open, mm -hmm. their virtual shelves, their virtual shelves are open to every author in the world. And so um, it, it really doesn't make sense to ignore them. Oh, yeah. I, I I'm completely agree with you, but I'm just trying to understand uh, by being on all the platforms out there, how much extra work in terms of preparation of the book plus in terms of marketing in those uh, 
platforms does a writer have to do? I mean, maybe that's one of the, you know, uh, fears that writers are having, uh, knowing how how much time they spend on marketing on Amazon. Maybe they think that, you know, it will be time consuming or it will need a learning curve or extra efforts. I mean, what will be the difference? Well, you know, certainly it's smart for every writer to value their time and to weigh the, the value of their time when they're looking at different opportunities. Uh, The truth of the matter is it really doesn't take much time at all to reach all these other retailers, um, especially if you're working with a distributor. And, you know, Smashwords is a distributor. Um, If you can upload your book to Smashwords, just one single file to Smashwords, we'll get it to all these other retailers other than Amazon. And it's really not difficult. All you need to do is get your book formatted for Smashwords. If you can get your book formatted for Smashwords, it'll work at all these other retailers. And the formatting is free. You can do it yourself with a word processor. Or if you already have an EPUB file, you can simply upload that to us. So one upload and you can reach multiple retailers. Okay, I see. So basically, you just make sure that the book document is formatted properly, and then you deal with all the rest. Right. So I, I wrote a formatting guide. It's, it's, the title is the Smashwords Style Guide. Mm-hmm. It's been downloaded probably 600,000 times wow. in, the last, in the last five years. Um, a, lot of, a lot of authors actually use the style, even authors who don't use Smashwords, use the style guide to format for Amazon. So if you follow the style guide follow the instructions there, you'll get a great book file that you can use at both Smashwords and at Amazon. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see. Well, the biggest like issue where we get as writers is, and it, it's like for all platforms, not only Amazon, is like when you upload your book and when you have it there, you know, if you don't do anything specific, most probably it will stay invisible and won't be selling and readers won't really notice that, you know, you even have a book out there. Are there like, you know, what will be your advice for newbie writers who don't have readership in place yet, who don't have their own audiences, and they are just, you know, uploading their very first book on Smashwords, which later on goes to all those platforms. What does a writer need to do next? Okay, well, great question. You know, the first thing I'd say about marketing in general, and and I say this as someone who worked for about 20 years in marketing before I started Smashwords, it's important that writers see their marketing and promotion efforts as a catalyst for their publishing, but it's not the fuel that will catapult them to bestsellerdom. The most important piece of the puzzle is to write a super awesome book. So if your book is only good, good isn't good enough anymore. Mm-hmm. Your, your book needs to touch the reader's soul. It me- it, the, the book needs to take readers to an emotionally satisfying extreme. When, when a reader reads your book, they need to go, wow, that was amazing. Mm-hmm. And if you, um, if you look at the bestseller lists at any major retailer and read the reviews, you'll see readers going, wow, that was amazing. I couldn't put it down. I'm telling all my friends about it. I can't wait to read the next book. Those are books that are successfully you know, um, providing that emotionally satisfying extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's the very most important thing. You know, A lot of authors, especially self-published authors, will cut corners, maybe publish a book that hasn't been professionally edited, and you know, they'll put the book out there and maybe they're getting you know, three, three, three and a half star reviews. That's not good enough if you want to reach a lot of readers because book marketing has always really been about word of mouth. It's the ability of your book to turn one reader into two readers through word of mouth. So that's the very most important thing that the writer should focus on before they release their book. The second most important thing is the quality of the ebook cover. Yeah. The cover the cover image is the first impression that your book is going to make on a potential reader. Um, the 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 cover needs to be micro targeted to your audience. The cover the cover the cover image alone needs to communicate what your book is about and the emotional experience that your book is going to provide the reader. Because readers are reading either for for an emotional experience or for an intellectual experience, or sometimes a combination of both. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it depends on if you're writing fiction or nonfiction. 
Yeah. Um, and so you want the cover to promise that. So that's that's the next most important thing. And if you're d- trying to design the cover on your own, your cover is going to look amateur. You should definitely hire a professional to design your cover for you. And professional cover design doesn't cost very much. It's really quite affordable. You know, in, in U.S. dollars, you know, often for $100 or less, you can get a high-quality professional cover that looks as good or better than what the big New York and London publishers are putting out. Mm-hmm. So the, those are probably the first most important things. Um, the next most important thing, I think, is to make sure your book is broadly distributed in every store um, and then make sure that the book that you've, you've attached, you know, high quality metadata to your book. So metadata is information about your book. Metadata makes your book discoverable to readers who are looking for a book just like yours. So the categorization of the book, uh, the title of the book, uh, the book description needs to really grab the reader. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, on pricing, pricing is really important. You want to choose a price that's that's fair. Um, so for self-published fiction, we found that two ninety nine and three ninety nine U.S. dollars works well. Those are the sweet spots for fiction. Um, the next thing you want to think about before you release your book is getting it up on pre-order. We have crunched the numbers and we found that books that are born as pre-orders dramatically outsell books that are simply uploaded you know, in, you know, for immediate release. So if you're not doing pre-orders, you need to do pre-orders. And I should clarify, though, that pre-orders at Amazon work completely differently than pre-orders at iBooks, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Uh-huh. Um, a lot of authors have determined that a pre-order at Amazon actually hurts them because a pre-order will actually cannibalize the sales rank that your book will achieve when it goes on sale. Mm-hmm. But at, at iBooks, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo, all of those orders that you accumulate during your pre-order period credit toward your first day's sales rank. And this causes your book to spike into the bestseller lists to increase in sales rank so that your book becomes more visible okay, to readers. I see. And, and when your book becomes more visible to readers, it becomes more desirable to readers. So I think, I think ebook pre-orders, especially at iBooks, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo, are probably the, the most powerful tool available to indie authors today. Okay, I see. Well, let's uh, try to imagine a situation which I think will be very common based on my talks with the writers. Uh, let's say we already have some books on Amazon. It has been with KDB Select. Uh, it's it's out of there already, so we can actually go ahead and distribute it on other platforms as well. So what are the steps? Can we have this book as pre-order on other platforms, for example? Or it's since it has been published, published on Amazon already, we can't. I mean, how, how does this work? How How is the best transition from just Amazon to, you know, broadening the the limits? Sure, sure. So yes, you can do, as you're taking those books um, out into the broader world, you could release them as a pre-order. Um, that would work. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, just now making preparations to go broad and distribute everywhere, um, you could get your books up on pre-order today at Smashwords and maybe set a release date that's a month or two out. Mm-hmm. I, would, I wouldn't go too long because um, your books are available for readers today. So you know maybe four or five weeks mm-hmm. um, would be enough time for you to get the pre-order listings up at these other major retailers, and then you could start you know, communicating to your readers that your books will soon be available on these other platforms, and you can start marketing the books before they become available. And during that pre-order period, you should be able to accumulate a few orders, which will make the books land higher in sales rank when they finally go on sale. Mm-hmm. So that's certainly doable. Okay, I see. And what about, I mean, since most of the authors are already familiar and we already spoke a lot about marketing um, books on Amazon and, you know, their algorithms and how it works and stuff like that, are, uh, you know, how are the other platforms working? Do they have specific things that we have to consider while marketing our books in in Kobo and iBooks and other platforms? Well, there are a lot of similarities between every single one of these retailers. So all of them have, you know, the same concept of like readers who bought this book also bought this book. Mm-hmm. So you'll get that automatically 
with all these other retailers. Um, when you're marketing the books to uh, your books at these different retailers, I think it's really important to update your website and your blog so that you're providing direct hyperlinks to your books at the major retailers so mm-hmm. that your books are only one click away. Um, and use the, um, use the logos of the different retailers. Yeah. You know, for example, um, for, I, for iBooks customers, there are 1 billion iOS devices out in the world today. Yeah. And that's, that's 1 billion customers who are already using that platform. And the iBooks app is pre-installed on your website or your blog if you put the iBooks logo, the Apple logo on, on your blog and provide those customers or direct hyperlink to the iBook store, um, it make it makes it very easy for those one billion customers to automatically self-identify as a potential reader for your book and know that their your book is just one click away from being sampled or purchased by them. That's a great thing that you should do as you expand your distribution everywhere. You know, a lot of writers make the mistake even when they're fully distributed of only promoting a single bookstore, and that's a mistake. You want to make your book as as accessible as possible to all the different readers um, on these platforms. Let's just imagine, I mean, uh, I'm just trying to look at everything uh, from the newbie's point of view. And let's say when I was doing a small research, trying to understand how to get into all these other platforms and what's the easiest way, uh, there were two options which I came across, which was obviously the Smashwords and Draft to Digital. And to be honest, I haven't gone into all the details and I haven't compared those two, but I would like to to find out is, you know, what are the differences and, you know, uh, what's the advantage of that Smashwords has, uh, you know, compared to, to the other option. Well, every author who decides to work with a distributor actually has multiple options. So there's us, there's Draft to Digital, there's Ingram Spark, Inscribe. So there are many, many uh, ebook distributors out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't say anything bad about any of them. Um, you know, I think they're all competent. Um, you know, but you know, I can talk about Smashwords and why I think we're a good choice. Smashwords was the original ebook distributor for self-published authors. We've been doing it longer than anyone. Mm -hmm. We've been doing it since 2008. We're probably the world's largest distributor of self-published eBooks. And unlike a lot of these other distributors, we're a little bit unusual. We've, we also have our own store and in the store, in the store, we've built a lot of really interesting tools that you won't find anywhere else. So for example, we have a tool called the Smashwords Coupon Manager. This allows you to create custom coupon codes that you can use in promotion. So you can have percentage off, dollars off, or even make books available for free to bloggers, book reviewers, um, or fans as, as, as an incentive in your promotions. We just recently launched widgets. So we make it really easy for you to promote your books um, in the Smashwords store to your fans um, on your blog, on your website, and we make it easy for the fans and the readers to show their appreciation for you by sharing your widgets, promoting your books on their websites and blogs. Ah. So that's another, new, yeah. that's another new tool that we haven't really even fully announced yet. Um, in fact, we haven't announced that new widget tool. You know, and, and one of the, the, the general benefits of working with a distributor is that you've got aggregated, aggregated control, centralized control, over your books. So you've got a single upload, you've got a single dashboard from which you control your distribution to multiple retailers. You've got aggregated sales reporting, aggregated payments, um, aggregated intelligence, which can help you really make more intelligent decisions about your publishing. So for example, we have a feature in the Smashwords dashboard called uh, daily sales. And you can see on a single chart how your books are performing at Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, and at Overdrive, um, you mm-hmm. know, both next day and same day sales. So that's a really powerful tool. So, you know, I think we've got a lot of benefits that, uh, that probably some of these others can't match. We've got a broad distribution channel. We're reaching a lot of retailers that you can't reach any other way. 
and we'll be adding more retailers, you know, in the in the months ahead. Mm-hmm. You know, at Smashwords, we're just completely focused on serving our authors and helping our authors reach readers. You know, our engineering efforts are are focused around building tools, professional quality tools that give you a, a sales and marketing advantage out in the marketplace. Just yesterday, we announced um, a new tool called Assetless Pre-Orders. So this allows you to establish a pre-order at a retailer even before your book is finished. Oh. Um, you can establish the pre-order up to 12 months in advance at, at Apple and about six or eight months in advance at Barnes & Noble and Kobo. This, you know, pre-orders are really exciting. Um, you know, if you've got a new book coming out, pre-orders enable more effective advanced marketing of mm-hmm. the book. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you've got that, that sales advantage on the first day of release when you get the high chart entry uh, because of the um, all of those sales being concentrated onto the first day of release. Mm-hmm. Um, another tool at Smashwords that I'm really excited about, and we launched this about a year and a half ago, is uh, something called the Smashwords Series Manager. So if you write books in series, um, we support enhanced metadata for series so that your series books become more visible, more discoverable at the retailers. Um, So these are just a few of the examples of the tools um, that we offer at Smashwords. And all these tools are free. Um, We don't charge uh, any fees for authors to use our service. We we, We do free conversion, free distribution, and we only make money if your book sells, we take a, a small commission on the sale, which works out mm-hmm. to about ten percent, about ten percent of the retail price. Yeah, which is very fair. I mean, compared to the service that you provide, I guess it's you know, I I, I think it's very fair. And uh, also, I have a feeling that pre-orders can also kind of you know work as a very good accountability tool so you know it will kind of motivate the writer to actually meet the deadline Mm -hmm. and and it's very nice that you know it doesn't work like amazon on the other platforms it kind of accumulates and you you get credit for all the sales on the day of the launch which is pretty impressive and and convenient for the writers and since you uh, mentioned series um i i want to discuss that part I, i want to know how do you feel about series and if you think that it's going to become a a really dominant trend in fiction in the near future because uh, right now romance uh, series romance novel series are quite popular these days but i wonder what you think about mysteries and thrillers and you know um, these type of series uh, and and their future trends in fiction sure sure well i think i think series are a big trend um and and, and have certainly been pioneered by the the self-published romance authors. Uh, romance authors have had enormous success with series. Um, series work with readers because if you think about it, series reward the reader for making that time and emotional investment in the book. Yeah. Because they they're introduced to characters and stories that they love. And they get to live with those characters for a longer period of time because the books continue on as a series. So I think I think every every writer of fiction should be thinking about series. It's a great chance to build, you know, this epic universe around your story. Series writers also have some 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 marketing advantages that other writers don't have. Um, we found um, that our authors achieve enormous success by pricing their series starter at free. Mm-hmm. If you price, we, we found, we actually crunched the numbers recently. We compared uh, the earnings of, of our best-selling series that have a free series starter against mm-hmm. the earnings of our best-selling series that don't have a free series starter. And we found that series with free series starters earn uh, 66% more Mm-hmm. Than books, than series without free series starters. So if you do write series, definitely price the first book in the series at free. I think you'll be really surprised, pleasantly surprised by the results. Series also work well with pre-orders. You know, if you think about it, if you're writing, if you're going to be publishing book three or four in a series, 
the prior books can promote the books that you have on pre-order. Oh, yeah. So we have a lot of author, we have a lot of authors that'll do a couple books in the series and they'll get the next two books up on pre-order now mm. so that they can stri- start driving those series readers into the pre-order um, and the the readers appreciate seeing that you that that there are additional uh, books available on pre-order it 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 gives them increased confidence to make that investment in your series you know the worst fear for a lot of a lot of writers is that you know a writer won't finish the series or won't build it out you know the the readers really want to get into the series and so when they see more series books um it makes the series more interesting Oh yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I want to share my experience. When I wrote my very first novel, it was based on a true life story, and I wasn't planning to write a series, and I still don't uh, plan to write a series around that. But it had kind of an open ending, and I was, uh, you know, I I was a completely new writer. It was my first novel, and I didn't have readership in place back then, and uh, you know, the red- readers I gained was through. Uh, free days promotion and I was receiving emails asking when the book number two will be coming out so you know that was kind of when I realized how powerful writing series may be because I was a completely new writer even and this was the very first experience of them writing my book so I realized that if it was you know designed as being a series and you know if I was planning to do that I would obviously you know gain Uh, at least some part of the readers who read the first book and take them along the other uh, ones which would be coming out. Exactly. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, ex- I mean, I I was really surprised. It was kind of a few years ago when the series weren't as popular as they are now, but, you know, one could already kind of fe- ha- get the feeling that they would be because even back then people were really kind of, the demand was there, let's say. Yeah, one of the neat things about ebooks is that it makes series books more discoverable to the reader. Like if you think back, you know, 10 years ago when we were all buying paper books and paperbacks, you could read a book that you just absolutely love at, that you purchase at the bookstore, but there's there's no way for that that retailer to tell you that the new book in the series is out or that that there is a book in the series. Mm-hmm. Um or you could read a book in a series and it's not immediately clear if the other books are out or what the other book titles are. So that's one of the neat things about about ebooks is that um, the entire series is just more accessible, uh, more immediately accessible to the reader. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. Well, basically, I guess we covered pretty much everything. I just want to emphasize the fact that, you know, if the authors want to cover all the platforms, basically all they have to do is just, you know, make sure that their book is within uh, the is formatted through the Smashwords standard. So they just have to complete and finalize one document and upload it there and everything is done. And basically all they have to do later on, if their book is selling, they just share a very small portion of their revenues with you. That's all, right? Royalties. Right, right. That's how it works. That's how it works. And, 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 I, should, and I should also point out that when you upload to Smashwords, we consider you the publisher. You retain all the rights to your book. So we don't require exclusivity. Um, we don't take any rights to your book. You can uh, remove your book at any time. Uh, not that that would be a smart idea, but um, <laughs> you, have to- you have total control of your book at mm-hmm. Smashwords. Mm-hmm. Um, we make it really easy to manage your book, and especially once you have multiple books, that's when a distributor makes a lot of sense. Because if you want to run a price promotion on five different books, um, you can change the price of those five different books across all the retailers um, really quickly. It really just takes about sixty seconds at Smashwords to change the price, and then we update all the retailers um, pretty quickly. Yeah, which kind of brings me back to to where we started that, you know, it will save a lot of time for you to to manage all the platforms all in one place. Definitely. You know, if you think about it, the unique contribution that that your writers, your listeners 
are making upon the world is their writing. That's the one thing that authors can do that no one else can do is their unique contribution to writing. And authors should organize their time so that they're spending more time writing and less time on on the non-essentials. Mm, yeah, exactly. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I was like, you know, the wrap-up question, the very last one. Uh, if you were in someone's shoes who is just starting from scratch and he's writing right now his very first book, what would be the biggest advice you would give? I think the the biggest piece of advice that I would give is that there has never been a better time to be a writer today. Um, you can start a book today and with 100% assurance, you can know that one way or another, your book will be published, whether it's self-published or traditionally published. So, you know, get your book out there, but recognize that it's tough to sell books. Most authors, whether they're traditionally published or self-published, don't sell well. And you want to keep your your expectations realistic and recognize that you are embarking on a long-term journey, that you should be thinking about the books that you're going to write next. And you should plan that you might spend years and years writing and publishing and toiling away in obscurity and not selling well. But you need to power on. You know, the writers who succeed are the writers who view this as a long-term a long-term endeavor. Um, if you have a short-term perspective, if you're looking for quick fixes, it, it, those won't happen. And those are the authors who get washed up and uh, washed out and quit really early. Mm -hmm. But if you if you take the proper perspective that this is long-term, that you're publishing because you love to write, you love to publish, you love to connect directly with your readers. If you if you publish for the right reasons like that, then um, self-publishing will be very enjoyable and writing will be very enjoyable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally agree. Well, thank you very much for coming over. Thanks a lot for dedicating this time with us and for sharing all this valuable advice that you've done. Uh, so thanks a lot once again and I wish you further success with Smash Words because I think you've come a very long way already. Thanks, Annie, and, and the best to you as well. Thank you. Take care. Well, I hope that now it's very clear how you can make your books available on other platforms besides Amazon and what are the advantages of doing so. And before I leave you, I want you to uh, pay attention once again about what Mark mentioned, that the quality of the book you're putting out there is extremely important and you have to make sure that your book is professionally done before it's published. And for that, I want to introduce you the very new service that me and my business partner, Jotsna Ramachandran, have launched just a few weeks ago. And it's called Publish My Book Today. And we're trying to help you out with everything that needs to be done to your book before it's ready and uh, professionally finalized to get published and we help with the publishing too so basically what you can get from us is book cover design formatting kindle and paperback publishing author websites audiobook production and many many more please check out our website at www.publishmybook.com today and you can have all the details what I'm really uh, proud of is that we managed to keep the prices very affordable you will uh, spend at least so much by looking for freelancers and hiring them separately anyway so check out once again www.publishmybook.today and we will be happy to help you out making your book as good as you should have it okay well that was it i wish you a really great week i hope that you will keep writing and i'm looking forward to see your next bestseller coming out